All right, cleaning the jackrabbit can be relatively easy. And I've got a method here that allows you to skin the jackrabbit off and, and just take the quarters and take the back straps um, without having to mess with a lot of messy insides. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna skin it through here and pull all of the fur off in, in one piece in a sock. And then you're left with the meat and you can take both hind quarters, both back straps, which are full of meat, and both front quarters. Um, and that's, that's all of the meat that's uh, worth keeping here. And so you start out by making just a little incision on the side leg. And after you've got that, you don't need your knife for a while. You can work with that incision and just tear the hide instead of trying to cut and having a lot of loose fur and having cuts into the meat. So you can just get your fingers in between the meat and the skin and tear that away. And you go up the other leg. And when you get to the top here, you just come around so you can free that up. That comes off, so you've got one leg free. And you can pull upward on the other one, free that. and pull that down. You've got both hindquarters free. And once you get it, both hindquarters free, you can pull this back skin out until you get your hand in between here and pull it through. And then you can pull it upward off the tail and you're left with this one piece sock that you can pull off. Now the one place that it's the stickiest is up here in the brisket. So if you're pulling back here, sometimes you can separate that up here. So when you get to this point, you want to make sure you get a good firm grip on that front of that brisket and pull downward forward. And that, that makes sure that that part doesn't stick and stay on there. And then you just pull it off the front shoulders, down to the neck. When you get that much of the front leg exposed, then you can hold on to the skin here and push that elbow upward until once again, you've got a little space right here. You can stick your finger in and free that up. And you don't need to take it off because you're gonna be cutting the leg anyway there. So the same thing on the other side, push the elbow up and you free that space, you pull that down. So now you've skinned that whole thing without without needing a knife up to that point. Now to take the front legs off, there's not enough meat in here. There's a lot of sinew and, and tough stuff. So you come in right behind the elbow and you cut behind the elbow and you can see how that goes right down to that joint. So you can cut behind the elbow there and then cut up on the other side of the joint. You want to free all the muscle tissue around that joint. And then you can just pull the joint backwards and it cracks. And so then all you're left with is the, the tendons that are holding that joint together. So that comes off like that. If you try to cut any place else, you're gonna run into solid bone. So if you do that, you can get through that joint pretty easy. So we've got the meat exposed there. So now we take the front quarters off and you can come in with a knife right along the rib cage and just cut all that connective tissue. And the front quarters are surprisingly easy to come off. There's not much that holds that front shoulder on, not like a hind quarter. So you can just keep cutting from the inside of the armpit out and that whole quarter comes off. And you have a nice piece of front quarter. And the same with this other side, right against the rib cage, and it flays off in one piece. So we have the front quarters. Now the other part of it then is the back straps, which are the two strips of meat hanging there. And there's a white dotted line here that's the top of the spine, the top of the backbone. And so you just cut just to one side of that backbone. And it's a long muscle, so you go all the way to the back and all the way to the front. 
And once you get in there, you feel the ribs uh, going down the top of the rib cage. So now once you have that cut down to the ribs, you're just cutting and filleting that meat off of the top of the rib cage. And it feels a little awkward at first, but if you keep turning the knife a little like this, it's just like filleting a fish. So you can get your fingers in there after a while, carefully, and you can fillet that meat right off. You go all the way to the back. And you can see the rib cage up top there. So you just keep pulling and cutting until that frees up. And once you get to a, you get to a point where you get to this outer fascia, this outer white membrane, and once you get to there, you can just peel it off of that. It's very, not connected very tough there. So you have a nice back strap. And this meat is a lot more tender than the, the front quarters and the back quarters. And you, some people keep these separate and, and use them for recipes that uh, you can use a little more tender meat. Whereas the, the front quarters and the back quarters, you always want to cook with a slow, wet method uh, to make sure they're tender. So some people keep that meat separate. So we'll go down the other side of the backbone down to the top of the rib cage. And you just keep turning the knife a little bit so you can fillet that off. And if you get out too far from the backbone and you leave a little meat next to the backbone, um, you can always come back and just harvest that meat. Now I can see I'm all the way through, so I'm pulling it off of that outer fascia. If you leave that on, it, it really solidifies on there in the freezer and it's hard to flay off later and it's really tough. You don't want to leave that on if you don't have to. So there's another back strap there. Now it's just the hindquarters. Um, and of course you want to do that one last because you're hanging up with that. But with the hindquarters, um, there's a couple tricks. One, it's tempting to come right in the middle there and try to cut that whole thing off. And if you do that, it puts you right in the middle of that uh, pelvic bone. And so you go right into solid, this little V-notch of solid bone. So you really have to find this little bump on the outside, um, right up here. And you want to be on the outside of that, so you clear that pelvic bone. But as soon as you cut on the outside of that little bump you can feel there, you want to come right back to the center line, so you don't lose any meat in there. And you come right back to that center line, just like the back straps right to the side of the backbone. So you have to work around that top bone of the pelvic bone. There's also corners of the pelvic bone down here that you have to work around. Again, it seems like you should just cut in here and take that whole quarter off, but there's a pelvic bone in there and you have to really stay outside of that pelvic bone and then go inside right away. So there's a point in the front and a point in the rear that you have to be on the inside of to make sure you cut that. And once you get that outside done, then the inside is just a matter of freeing it up down to that ball joint. And once you expose that ball joint, then it just comes off as a quarter. You've got a good meaty quarter there. It's good, good pink meat. Uh, Jackrabbits are a darker meat than a cottontail. Cottontail is more like a um, more like pork or chicken, whereas jackrabbits are a darker meat and you usually use uh, beef recipes. Now when you have that foot there, you want to separate the keychain from uh, the quarter. And if you bend that knee there, there's two little white bumps with uh, a white, white tendon in between there. And you cut right through that white tendon in the front. And you can see how it just released that joint. So you cut through that, cut on the sides of that. And then this is a good piece of muscle back here, this calf muscle. So I like to keep that, separate that so that this calf muscle comes off with the rest of the meat. So you can cut that down to the joint and around the joint. We've already freed up that joint, so all we need to do is bend it a little bit so that we can get at the center of it and cut through the tendons. And so you end up with that quarter and, and that little calf muscle attached there. So you do the same thing with the the other quarter, this is the last thing because um, there's nothing else on here and it's hanging from there. But here's that little bump again. You go around that and back to the center line. And then there's also this corner up here that you have to stay on the inside of, but you go right back to the center line. And you work your way around to the, the center ball joint. And 
you free that up. Here's the, um, the back of this. Here's those two bumps when you bend the knee. Two white bumps with the white in between. You cut through there. I cut this back part. You have to be careful because you're hanging by this gambrel here. And so as soon as you cut this, you're going to free the, the leg up. And it's going to fall. So you have another good quarter. So you've got two good hind quarters and two good back straps and two good front quarters. Um, and you can cook them with the bone in like that with various recipes. You can also uh, debone it at this point, cut it up into little stew chunks and use those kind of stew chunks, but a good untapped resource. So that's a good way to, to clean jackrabbits. You don't need to get on the inside. You can hang it up. You can take the quarters off, skins off very easy. Um, it's a real slick way to do it without getting your hands too dirty.